الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Um, as for our Quran reflection, um, uh, tonight we, we read three surahs, uh, Surah Al-Safat, uh, Surah, uh, Surah Sa'd, and Surah, uh, we started Surah Al-Zumar, inshallah, which we'll be finishing in the second half. Um, there's a lot of reflections, again, you know, subhanAllah, for the Quran, you can, it's so hard to pick and choose what to speak about, but uh, something we haven't spoken about much this Ramadan is the stories of the Prophets. We spoke about it once in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And so uh, I want to inshallah reflect on the story of another prophet tonight. A few things to be aware of when we, read, when we hear the stories of the prophets in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen these stories to be an example and a guide for humankind till the end of time. And so these stories are not given to us um, for entertainment purposes. Uh, as, as something to, you know, share with our children and, and have a, you know, a good chat over a bonfire and, and just bond. That's not the purpose of these stories. The Quran is not a history book. It isn't a book of records to tell us this is the history of humankind. These are the chronological events. This happened first. This happened second. This happened third. The Quran is, is not a history book. The Quran is a book of guidance. It's a book of guidance. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has given us the stories that are in it are guidance for all of humankind, believers and disbelievers. If, and everybody can relate to these stories because they address the vices of human beings. The sins of people are the same. Humans are humans. The desires are the same desires. Ego, pride, greed. Lust, right? The, same, the desires are the same desires. They're not changing. The devils are the same devils. And, 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 and so the, the challenges that human beings will go through is always going to be the same. The forms of it might change. But you will find that later generations are committing the same sins of the ancient nations. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives us stories in the Quran that address the different vices of, of human beings. And so one story that is short and uh, mentioned in Surah uh, Sa'd is also mentioned in Surah Al-Anbiya is the story of Nabiullah Ayyub alayhi salam. His story is mentioned in just a few ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَاذْكُرْ عَبَدَنَا أَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانِ بِنُصْبٍ وَعَذَابٍ أُرْكُضْ بِرِجِلِكْ هَذَا مُغْتَسَلٌ بَارِدٌ وَشَرَابٌ وَوَهَبَنَا لَهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَذِكْرَى لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ وَخُذْ بِيَدِكَ ضِغْثًا فَاضْرِبْ بِهِ وَلَا تَحْنَثْ إِنَّا وَجَدْنَاهُ صَابِرًا Five ayat, if I'm not mistaken, or six, that speak about the story of Ayyub alayhi salam. What is the story of Nabiullah Ayyub alayhi salam? He, his story is one of great calamity. We spoke about calamities last night. And one of the anbiya who's known for going through hardship and calamities is Nabiullah Ayyub alayhi salam. His calamities were personal. There were other MBA that were trialed with their people that were killed. But his calamity was home and at home and it was regarding his health and his family and his wealth. The most personal items of a person is your personal health, your body, your wealth, and your family. These are the treasures of human beings. And so Ayyub alayhi salam was a prophet who was, who was tested with all of these calamities. He, had, he was afflicted with an illness, the scholars, the historians, they mention, for over two decades. To the point that he was, the people wouldn't visit him. And people even started doubting his prophecy, his prophethood. Saying that if this was a righteous man, he wouldn't be afflicted the way he, he is. Nobody would enter his home. Nobody would greet him. And he became a talk of the town. 
this is a man who has been, who's ill, do not come near him, he's contagious, he's, you know, not pure, and so on and so forth. So he was extremely ill, and not just extremely ill, he was, uh, uh, he was, he was, he, there was a, his reputation was being tarnished in, in society. Um, and he was disconnected, and he was home, and he was ill for many decades, for a long time, for more than a, two decades. He, alayhi salam, was also tested with his um, wealth. He had a farm and land, and all of his, his crops had been ruined, and he lost all the wealth that he had possessed, to the point that his, his, his scholars of tafsir, they mentioned that his wife had become a maid, serving and, 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 and selling even her hair as a means, as some of the scholars mentioned, uh, uh, to, to, to try to generate income to support her husband and bring income to her house. He, alayhi salam, had lost all of his children. Allah had trusted him that all of his children had died. So you would think, subhanAllah, a man who was ill for many decades, who's lost all of his children, who's lost all of his money, what do you have? This is it. Like you're doomed. Right? You see people today, they, they lose their careers or the stock crashes and they're halas. They want to do suicide. Right? SubhanAllah with no iman. Uh, or, uh, or they end up in legal trouble. This is a Nabi who has lost everything except his iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was steadfast with Allah. He was patient. He was righteous. And so... After being afflicted for many years, his wife would say to him, Ayyub, will you not make dua that Allah lifts this calamity from us? That Allah eases our affairs. He was a man of great modesty. He was very, very, very shy. He said, how can I ask Allah to fix my affairs? How can I be impatient to ask Allah to rectify my affairs? He said he was too embarrassed to ask Allah. He would say, Allah has blessed me for so many years. And if he trials me for this number of years, how do I have the right to complain to Allah? Look at the level of the iman, right? It's, it's a whole nother level. Like It's a reality that this is of the great anbiya and the awliya. How can I raise my hand? It's not that he raised his hand and he's complaining. How can I even raise my hand? My Rabbi has blessed me. For many decades, I enjoyed a prosperous life. I had wealth. I enjoyed the company of my children for so many years. I had land. My Rabbi has taken that away from me. What complaint can I make? I will be patient. I will be patient with the decree of my Lord. And so he continued like that. That was his response when his wife would say, Make dua. Ayyub, you are a righteous man. Allah will grant you your dua. He said he was too shy to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, eventually he raised his dua, he made dua. And his dua is very unique, very different. He said, Rabbi anni masaniya shaytanu bi nusbi wa'ada. He didn't say, Ya Rabbi, you know, I've lost my children and I've lost my health and I've lost my wealth. Ya Rabbi, restore what I've lost. Ya Rabbi, provide for me and sustain me and bless for me. It wasn't any of that. He said, Ya Rabbi, I've been afflicted by the shaitan with hardship and pain. That's it. This is my problem, Ya Rabb. You do what you will. That's it. There isn't fix this or grant it to me in this specific way. Ya Rabb, I trust in your qadr. This is what we call tafweed. وَأُفَوِّضُ amri إِلَى اللَّهِ I put my affairs in the, in the hands of Allah. Ya Allah, I'm not asking you to trust my opinion or my judgment. I put my affairs, I trust them to you. What you decree for me, I accept. And I know it is the best for me. That's a higher level of iman. You're not just asking. Dua is, is a high level of iman, but tafweed is even greater. right? Tawakkul and then tafweed, right? Tafweed is you put it all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever it is. And so Ayyub alayhi salam, and it's from the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you know, to, to make tafwid. But it's a high level of iman. It takes a lot of development and a lot of spiritual uh, guidance and knowledge. And so he said, Ya Rabb, I've been afflicted by the shaitan with hardship and pain. 
And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to him. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا Oh, he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, أُرْكُذْ بِرِجْلِكَ هَذَا مُغْتَسَلٌ بَارِدٌ وَشَرَابٌ He told them, stomp with your feet. Uh, from it will come a, 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 a spring that is cool and a drink. And that you can shower and clean yourself with, which will be a, a cure to his illness. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him, granted him a miracle. And so that water that had come restored his health. And he, so he cleansed himself with it and, it, and and he used it to restore his property and his wealth. He alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَذِكْرَ لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ." And we restore, we we uh, uh, replenish for him. We restored for him his family and their like. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restored for him, gave him children, the number of children that he had lost, and a double that amount. And so Allah had restored for him what he had lost, and he doubled it. وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا As a mercy from us, وَذِكْرَى لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ And as a reminder for those of understanding. Allah made his story an ayah for all of the people till the end of Qiyamah. To reflect on the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, and, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَخُذْ بِيَدِكَ ضِغْثًا فَضْرِبْ بِهِ وَلَا تَحْنَثِ He made an oath. He got upset at his wife for, for, for you know, cutting her hair and selling it, which was is impermissible. And that he would, you know, when he got out of that, he would, uh, she would, there would be a consequence to that. And so Allah told them to fulfill that oath and do not break your promise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sa uh, said, uh, in uh, al abd, what an excellent servant he is. Inna wajadanahu sabira. Indeed, we have found him to be a patient servant. Inna hu awwab. And he was one who repented and returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. Inaba is to return to Allah regularly. Awab is somebody that returns to Allah all the time. They return to Allah every time they commit a sin. They return to Allah every time they forget to remember Allah. They return to Allah every time they become impressed with themselves. They return to Allah every time they become attached to other things. Every time they have a, a, a thought or an impression of their self or their ego takes over, they return to Allah. Inward and outwardly, they're always returning to Allah. He's a wab. He was a man that always returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, again, with the stories of the Quran, they're not here to, you know, they're not for us to take as entertainment. All of these stories apply to us because we all have the same human nature. We all have the same human nature, no matter how scholarly you are, how, how much you pray, uh, how strong of your iman is, uh, how much Quran you know. At the end of the day, the human nature is the same. It's the same obstacles we are challenged by, and it's the same mujahada we have to always do. And so the story of Ayyub alayhi salam, you know, just a, uh, just a few points if we were to put it in bullet points. Uh, one is to show us that uh, the etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that we don't question the qadr of Allah, we don't have the right to ask Allah, Ya Rabb, why have you done this? That is arrogance. That is not the word of a slave, of a servant to Allah. He doesn't ask why, Ya Rabb. Ya Rabb, you decree and you decree as you will. That's what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. When a calamity happens, what do we say? Qaddar Allahu wa ma shafa'al. Allah has decreed and He decrees as He wills. So that is the first, right? The first thing. We have to always have this humility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, contrary to what we see, this arrogance we see. In, in, in society today that has become widespread where people are having these, they, they challenge God. It's not a matter of truth and falsehood. It's a matter of if God is fair, why would he do this? They feel that they are, they have put themselves in a position to hold God accountable for his actions. This is the arrogance of today. Kibr is the sin that destroyed Iblis and it manifests itself in so many ways. The second lesson that we can take is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he trials a person, 
and they are patient, he will replenish their loss. That is the promise of Allah. Allah will replenish the loss of any servant. Nothing that is lost in this dunya of material and possession will, 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 be, uh, uh, will, not, will go unrewarded by Allah upon condition, upon iman and patience. A person must have patience and trust in the, in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Umm Salama radiallahu anha, um, her husband had died in battle. Uh, he, she was extremely afflicted and hurt by the death of her husband. And he told her, Ya Umm Salama, say, Inna li, you know, this dua, Allahumma ajirni fi musibati wa akhlif li khayra minha. Oh Allah, reward me in my calamity and replace it for me with something better. She, was, she said, Ya Rasulullah, who is better than Abu Salama? So her husband was such a righteous man. She said, you know, I, 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 I hear the dua, but just, you know, rationalizing about the dua you're asking me, like I can't find, I can't think of a man who will be better than Abu Salama. And it wasn't except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had married her to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the promise holds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replenish everything. The only thing that will not be replenished is iman. If a person loses iman, there is no restoration for your deen. Your deen is now in the dunya. If you lose it, there is no restoration. Yom al qiyamah is adab and hisab. Na'udhu billah min dhalik. Everything else you lose in the dunya. You lose wealth, you lose health, you lose your life. Zakariya and Yahya alayhim salam two prophets, father and son, were both murdered. And many of the prophets were killed. Everything will be replenished by Allah. Even the most righteous had lost their lives and lost their wealth and family. Allah will replenish it for them. But the life of the iman, Allah will not replenish. The iman, it is today in the dunya, that is your treasure, that is what you must prioritize. Everything else is secondary. Everything else is a means to reach akhirah. Your wealth, your job, your home. It's a means for you to have a stable life, to reach and fulfill the purpose of your existence. But to attain these pleasures is not your purpose. These pleasures aren't the treasure. They are not the objective. They are but the tools you need to fulfill your objective, to fulfill your purpose. So the objective and the purpose of existence is the worship of Allah, our jobs, our homes, our families, all of these things are a means to that. And so if we lose some of these things in, in, in our journey in the dunya, and everybody will lose something, nothing remains in the dunya. As long as we have our iman, Allah will replenish it all, Yawm al May Allah replenish that what the ummah has lost in this month and bring restore to it its honor and strength. There's so much more that can be said, but we don't have the time. We'll suffice with that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to increase our iman, to grant us steadfastness, to preserve for us iman in our hearts and in the hearts of our progeny, to forgive us, our parents, our teachers, and all of the Muslimin. If this is the night of Laylat al-Qadr, to make us among those who stand in it with iman and ihtisab, to guide us to Laylat al-Qadr, to make us among those who are emancipated from the fire. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alhamdulillah wa rabbil alameen.